Welcome to Vienna. I'm Wolfgang Pakone Horstron Carriage. They call him Fiaka here. What do the Fiaka have to do with food? This is a lot of paprika. Yeah, still put some more because we want it spicy, eh? Watch as we spice it up in a classic Austrian kitchen. It's the magic of goulash and more. Looks very nice. As they say, live and live in Essen, or as you Americans say, live, love and eat. Hello everybody. Hi. Hello. Look, everybody's mighty big. How are you? I, I need a kiss. Put it right here. All right, now it's good. How are, no, it's good. I need a little decoration of me. And how are you over here? You all right? You ready? Be careful. Welcome everybody. I hope you're comfortable because today we are making comfort food. That's the food that reminds us always of family and home, at least for me. Austrian food is for me comfort food. For you it might be what? Macaroni and cheese? <laughs> Hamburgers, hot dogs or what? So today we are making two comforting dishes from Austria. First, chicken paprikaj. It sounds a little Hungarian, but it's actually Austrian. Tender chicken simmered to perfection in a zesty paprika sauce. With garlic, marjoram and a touch of creme fraiche. How great does that look? It tastes even better. And to go with it, a very special dumpling. Austrians love dumplings. Sweet one, uh, salty one, anything you like. It's the perfect companion to our chicken. So good and so delicious. I'm getting homesick already. So let's go to the city of Vienna where I learned the history of the granddaddy of Austrian comfort food, goulash. The beautiful city of Vienna is a living postcard, rich in history and tradition, like the theater, opera and cafes. <laughs> Classic foods like sausages and Wiener schnitzel are just as important to their culture, but the granddaddy of Austrian dishes throughout history is goulash. This is the way they made goulash in Hungary centuries ago when it was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Now the empire might have dissolved, but goulash is more popular than ever. Practically everyone in Austria eats goulash. It's what they call comfort food. A hearty meat and potato meal without the potatoes. <laughs> Family recipes have been handed down for years. Everyone wanting to create their version of the perfect goulash. And today I'm visiting my friend Stefan Gurgalin, who owns this beautiful garden restaurant and also happens to be an expert on goulash. I'm not a chef, but I love good food. I love to travel around to learn about new ways of preparing food. The goulash is my favorite. The most important thing is you have to start with the onions. So how much onions do we need? Well, we need as much onions as meat. So the weight ratio should be one to one. One to one? It's a lot of onions. Now, since you are not a chef, how do you know so much about goulash? Well, in Vienna, almost everybody loves goulash. And every family has a different recipe how to make it. My grandmother used to make the goulash in a very specific way. And she was very rigid to have the right spices and the right meat with it. Uh -huh. And to cook it for at, at least two hours. OK, and here we have the meat. I'm going to cut some already. Yeah, this is, this is beef. Beef. What do you drink with the goulash? Um, I love to have a beer. A beer. Uh, we, don't, we don't like to have wine with it. The best thing either is you can eat the goulash in the morning and you need beer in the morning as well. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to go to the huge skillet, which looks more like a kitchen sink. And Thomas, you told me to put pork fat in here. Here I have pork fat. Look at that. Why pork fat? This pork fat um, is necessary to get uh, the high temperature for the onions in order to transform it to the brown color. Here come the onions. You can see it's smoking hot. <laughs> So you think these onions are nice and brown now? I think this is exactly the right color. Now right. We should now have start with the spices and start with the garlic. That's finely pureed garlic. And then what we add? Well, we add the meat at the moment. There is not one way to prepare goulash. There are many ways. There is one big difference between the Hungarian and the Austrian, mainly Viennese way of goulash. Hungarian way is more what we call a goulash soup, whereas the goulash in Vienna is mostly 
quite thick. And now I think the most important part in the goulash are the spices. The no? spices, and here we have two qualities. You have the mild, and this is the spicy one. Now I'm okay. from the south. You know, in the south we eat everything from spicy. Hungary, you still more spicy. Uh, okay, all right, good. Let's so go on with the spicy one. Let's add a lot of sp paprika. Okay, okay. That much? here you go. That oh much. Oh my God! Look at that. This is a lot of paprika. Yeah, huh? still put some more because we want it spicy, huh? Okay, oh, and now we're gonna add our yeah, beef stock. We go on. Let's add the caraway seeds, the kümmel, what we call it in here in Austria. And here we have the marjoram. Have the pepper, not too much. There so what? Now, Stefan, is that it with the spices? Yeah, it's okay, but now you should cook it between one and a half and two hours. All right, so we okay. can go and have a beer? Yeah, perfect. All right, let's, let's go. go. I love visiting these beautiful garden restaurants called Gasthäusers. Vienna has many tucked away in courtyards but you have to know where to look for There's them. one thing which is missing. We should put the peeled tomatoes in it and then it's gone. Okay? Okay. okay. Very good. Here we go. All right, so that's okay. it now. And that's now maybe five minutes, 10 minutes more and the goulash is ready. And here you have it, a perfect traditional goulash. Mm, it smells so good. But there's another famous goulash, the fiaca goulash. A fiaca is a horse-drawn carriage that can be found anywhere in Vienna. And long ago, a fiaca driver came up with his version of goulash. So, how did the fiaca driver make his? He took, first of all, a little cornichon, a cornichon. little cucumbers, which are pickled. He took uh, a sausage, a, a sausage, a fried or grilled sausage. Okay. And, uh, and the egg. The egg. Because so in former right. times, the carriage drivers had much to work, so they need much energy. Okay, so and you put that on top here? Okay, on top, and this is the fiaca goulash. Uh, now, anyway, looks very nice. Now we know what the fiaca goulash have to do with the fiaca drivers, huh? If it's too hot, some more beer. It's good together. Oh yeah, but it's hot enough. Perfectly, good, yeah. for me it's perfect. Yeah. Post. Prost, thank you. Great job. I wonder what they feed the horses, because they have to do all the work, really, not the fiaca guys. You know, everybody goes up eating goulash in Austria. It's like meat and potatoes here in America. Preserve your family tradition and all your recipes your mother hand down to you. And live, love and eat.